Hi Virgo, how are you guys doing? I hope November was useful, helpful. December is a trip <laughs> all on its own. Um, it really has a character all of its own. A lot of that has to do with the big shifts that are going on, the biggest shift being Saturn. Um, it, and it is, you know, solstice time. It is the end of another year. It is a time of culminating energies. Now, before I get started on all the things to look out for this month, Virgos, I am just going to point out that I am wearing Tiffany from Pink Loon's beautiful one-of-a-kind stuff. Um, she, these jewel, this jewelry is amazing. I wear it every day of my life. She is still giving you 15% off. She just reopened the shop with brand new stuff, stuff you've never seen before. So please go check her out. I'm going to leave her info in the description box. Now, let's talk December. Now, I have like a whole notebook of notes because there's just so much happening. Now, we have the Gemini full moon um, on December 3rd. Now, this is in your 10th house of your reputation in the world, what you're doing in the world. So it's highlighting what you're doing. You might be noticing that if you're feeling unsatisfied or you need to make a change in your career, that it's really getting highlighted. Now what's funny is your ruling planet, Mercury, is going retrograde that same day and your cards just fell on the floor. Excuse me, Virgo. I know you don't like it when I'm in disorganized, but I'm trying my best here, buddies. All right. It's exciting when cards fly out. It means there's energy behind you. So your ruling planet is going retrograde most of December. Uh, it will be a time to slow down. It will be a time to look internal. So we have a full moon in your career sector and we have your ruling planet going uh, retrograde. Excuse me. Now I'm going to do a full moon video. So check that out if you're interested in what that full moon is dealing with there. Okay. Now we also have a Sag new moon on the 18th of December, which is in your fourth house of home and family. Um, intention setting when it comes to what you want your home to look like, what you want your family to look like, what you want your what you want your internal space to look like. This can be a time to think about, do you like the house you're living in? Do you like your partnerships? Do you like the way that that internal space is feeling or do you need to make, do you want to make some new goals? The last new moon of the year, so utilize it, you know, enjoy it. Now the next day after that new moon, we have Saturn shifting from uh, Sagittarius into Capricorn. Now this is shifting from your fourth house into your fifth house. So Saturn is going into your fifth house, Virgos. This is kind of a big deal. Um, fifth house is about romance and creativity and relationships. It's about your heart. It's about where you find that joy and that childlike playfulness. Um, and Saturn is kind of a serious heavy energy um, that wants to have you look at things and make adjustments, learn lessons, get right with things, build things that last. So in a playful house, like the fifth house, it's a harder one. Um, now this is going to, and this is going to be lessons that you are going to be learning for the next three or two and a half years, three years. So you're, we are just dipping our toes in very, you know, very beginning of this process at the end of December. So what December is kind of doing is as Saturn's finishing up your fourth house energies, you're going to be kind of combing over that fourth house stuff and preparing to get involved in your fifth house lessons. Um, which don't, don't worry. It's, it's helpful. It gets you really truthful with where you, where things work and where things don't. And whatever part of the chart, no matter who you are, Saturn is affecting us at all times, depending on where we are in the chart. Now let's look at the cards that we have here. Okay, Virgo. Like I said, this month is a month of reflection, especially for people, you know, for the, the Virgos and gems out there, you are having to, you know, because your ruling planet's going retrograde, you are having a moment where you are learning, you're looking back over some things. And I'm seeing that already here. The first three cards are very much about reflection. We have the four of swords, the two of pentacles, the five of pentacles. So four of swords is like slowing down a little bit. You know, it's, it's, you're slowing down. You're looking internal. You are incorporating lessons. You are taking the last year and then you are looking at where you utilized energy that didn't work and where you utilized energy that did work. You are looking at where you overstepped and where you didn't push hard enough. Now it comes with this two of pentacles, which is, he's the juggler, right? Um, 
two of pentacles want, is that energy of where you want to be everything to everybody. You know, Virgos, you like to pick up everything for everybody and make it right. You want to put it right. You know, you're givers. You're, you, you like to make sure things are working. And you can often put yourself in the position where you are helping to the point where you aren't serving your real true self. Now, the two of pentacles speaks to that. And when I see this kind of reflective energy here, what you're going to be looking at is how you've done that in the past, how you have juggled for others, not for yourself, but for the situation, how you got your validation from being a helper, how you got your validation from being involved in all of this energy, right? And how you need to, how that hasn't served you. It might have left you feeling really tired. In fact, it comes out next with this five of pentacles. Now the five of pentacles, you know, is thinking about your self-worth, thinking about your value, feeling that you don't have value, feeling like you are cut out in the cold. You know, this is a card that we all struggle with, our self-worth. And a lot of you, I think, have, you know, spent 2017 learning a lot of lessons about what it looks like to give and overgive and what it looks like to play roles for people to make things work um, and how that has kind of left you feeling a little bit less than. Now, this isn't to say these energies are like the most dominant of the month. What this is saying to me is that you have some reflection to do. You have some pausing to do before you move forward. And you need to just acknowledge that this may be going on underneath the surface of your go-getter attitude and that it's okay. To, it's good to acknowledge and release. Acknowledge and release. Because if you can do that, there's a lot of really good things coming your way. There's a lot of really good things coming your way, but this is important, so don't skip it um, because it'll keep popping up otherwise. <sighs> um, and here's the thing. The Nine of Wands is next after all that kind of challenged slowdown energy. And the Nine of Wands is this world-weary warrior. It's the guy who's been through a lot of battles. And he's looking back, you know, he's aware of how the world works at this point, right? Uh, he's learned some lessons. He's hit up against some walls a few times. So in seeing the Knight of Pentacles, or the Knight of Wands, excuse me, the thing is that you have learned a lot from this last year. You have learned a lot from the pushing and the and the having to learn how to stand up for yourself a little bit better and the having to learn where to set healthy boundaries, you've learned so much and it's actually informing where you're going next. So keep that in mind. Like you might feel like, why didn't I do things differently? Why didn't I make better choices? Why didn't I do things as perfectly as I could have? Why did I make the mistakes that I made? There's a tendency here, what I'm seeing at the beginning of the month is for you to wanna to regret things you've done, but without those things, and I'm not, and I know it sounds like a platitude, but it's not. Without those things, you would not be here. You would not be here with the information you have. You would not be here with the, with the progress you have. And the thing is, it is all informing what is coming next, which is some amazing stuff. So we have the, I'll show you the next three because they are fantastic cards and I love them. And it's a really interesting combo. We have the 10 of pentacles, the magician, the nine of cups. Wow. This is quite the combo of energies. This is quite the combo of energies because, you know, we start here with the Ten of Pentacles. This is that legacy you want to have, the home you want to build, the partnerships you want to build, the work you want to do, the additions you want to make to your life. It's really beautiful energy. It is very inviting for the long haul. I think a lot of you are switching gears from looking back like this guy does. He's looking back at the past and assessing and kind of being like, okay, the 10 of pentacles is looking forward. It's looking at what things are going to look like if you continue to build. It looks like what will happen if you take a risk. The thing with this ten, to, 10 of pentacles is that he's hanging out here with the magician and the magician is a wild card. Um, I love the magician, but he comes in the form of a little bit of chaos. His magic is to come in and shake things up in order to get you to change, in order to get you to where you need to be. And that can look like a lot of different things and it can be very uncomfortable. Now, Virgos, you can roll with this for the most part. 
you're a mutable sign, you have that ability to kind of morph with things, but you do have a resistance too. You are earth and you do have a resistance to things coming in and shaking things up when you haven't approved it. Now, if you haven't done your homework with this emotional releasing at the beginning of the month, the magician will feel a lot harder on you. But the magician is an element of surprise. This is a major surprise factor. This is something coming in to shake your world up. Now, this can look like a shakeup at work. It can look like a big conversation in a relationship. It can look like something internally happening inside of yourself where you realize you want, you do want this vision of the Ten of Pentacles is completely different than you ever thought it was before. So... Um, you're being asked in order to get, you want the 10 of pentacles. It's a fantastic energy. It's coming in, but the only way you're getting the 10 of pentacles is if you work through this magician energy, if you work with this wild card energy, if you work with the, the side of yourself and the energies around you that are calling you to do something a little bit out of character, a little bit differently, um, something that you haven't done before, something that you haven't addressed before, it's there and it is strong. And the magician is also tied to the nine of cups. The nine of cups is about having everything you need and feeling emotionally contented and feeling you don't need to do much. Once again, though, the only way you're getting to the nine of cups is if you're willing to take a risk. If you're willing to roll with the unknown, because the thing with the magician is it's like, <laughs> this is, this is the best analogy I can think of with the magician. You know, when you were a kid, some of you might have played this game where they would put um, a box, like a like a cardboard box with a substance inside, like spaghetti or jello or something. Um, and they would have a hole cut in the middle and you'd put your hand in and you'd have to feel and guess what it was. But, you know, you'd put your hand in there not knowing if it was going to be something utterly disgusting, something dry, something you didn't know. And you had to put your hand in there, right? That's kind of the magician energy. It's like... You're not exactly sure what you're going to get out of it. Um, you're not exactly sure what it's going to look like on the other side. And it is scary because it is about um, doing things you've never done before, trying something you never tried before, even letting go of something that you're scared to let go of because if you let go of it, it's going to disappear. It's going to disappear. It's going to evaporate. You're never going to see it again. Um, maybe that will leave you desperate or stranded, but it doesn't. It doesn't. This magician is everything. This is everything you want, Virgo. The long-term commitment, the emotional satisfaction, the legacy, the consistency. Um, it's beautiful, but it is, it is a risky energy. And here's the thing, though. We have that Nine of Cups. You guys know what's coming next. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this, Virgo? As a Virgo moon, I'm a little excited about this. <laughs> the lovers and the two of cups. My goodness, you guys, what is happening here? Now, this is interesting because I was telling you at the beginning of the reading that Saturn's going into your fifth house. Now, this is super fifth house energy right here. Romance, you know, love, mushy, gushy, romance. Woo, you know, it's creative. It's it's spicy. And Saturn's going into this work part. But you know, sometimes Saturn can really do something to build strong partnerships. Now, Virgos, this is about meeting somebody. No doubt. When you get both of them together, this is about meeting somebody real. This is about meeting somebody who sees you and reciprocates. This is about somebody who does not trigger this. You know, I think you've all encountered people who have triggered this feeling of, worthlessness and like you have to do a lot to show up this person doesn't do that this is reciprocity this is reciprocity this is give and receive this is allowing things to to be there's a there's a natural flow to this so i'm i'm really excited for you virgos out there because i think you do you guys you virgos you do tend to put yourself in positions you are one of the signs that tends to put yourself in the position of loving people who don't appreciate everything you do and i think that has been one of the big lessons you have learned over the last few years and i think a lot of you have gotten really tired of giving of yourself and giving and giving and giving and then feeling like nothing and feeling like nobody and feeling like you're never going to get past that well, here you go. Now, it does require you shedding all those thoughts of self-worth and self-doubt. 
like the shedding thoughts of self-doubt and gaining sense of self-worth, right? It also requires you going through this magician. There is some wild card energy going on here. Like with the, the this is a leap of faith, you guys. And I know you guys are a little bit of skeptics, you know, as much as you are lovely and you do love and you are so giving and so heart centered. And I love you guys so much. I really do. Um, you do have a little bit of a resistance to this kind of energy sometimes, um, but it's there for you if you want it. Now, in getting into the reciprocal energy of the Two of Cups and the Lovers, it can trigger givers into feeling that they can't trust it and they have to fight it. And here we have the Seven of Wands as your final card. In fact, I'm going to pull a final card after this because we need to clarify this. But what I'm seeing here with this is when you get into a reciprocal energy, when you get into kind, giving, loving energy, chill, chilled out energy that's really nice for you, and you've been through a lot of times where people have made you feel less than, or you've been in situations that have taken a lot of your resources, you get into a reciprocal energy and there's a part of you that wants to fight <laughs> against it. You want to fight against the, the flow that's coming your way. And so you start to make noise. And the Seven of Wands is generally considered like the higher ground card where you're having to hold your higher ground. You're competitive. You're pushing others away. <laughs> you're saying, no, this is mine. I've earned this. Now that might be the case. You might be finding that you're getting your power back and that you're saying, I've earned this and I will keep this space. This is mine. But in regards to all the emotional cards that have come up, what I'm seeing with this is that you are going to want to get into that headspace when you don't need to because you're in a reciprocal relationship that isn't about who has higher ground. Now, I'm going to pull one more card because that is just too tempting to, we have to find out what happens with that, right? We can't just leave that sitting there. That would just be a total waste. So let's see what this is saying. But man, you guys, you are being called to really, here's the thing with what I'm seeing here. You are being called to really get real with what you want in partnerships. Not what you think you want, not like the cover story. What do you really want? And Virgos, I know what you really want is to be loved and appreciated for all that you do and for the way that you are and for nothing less than that. And that is exactly what you deserve. You deserve to be loved for exactly who and what you are because you're beautiful. Um, ah, the sun. That's, that's it. That's it. Because the seven of, so here's where your head might want to go. Here's where it really, everything really is. The sun. Things are much simpler than they may appear on the surface. You're going to want to, you're analytical. So you're going to want to analyze and figure out what's going on. You're going to want to get in there and be like, what is this? Why is this happening? Why are things suddenly shifting? Why does it suddenly feel like I can be in something reciprocal? Why does it suddenly feel like I can be somewhere that is consistent and strong? Well, because you're not used to it because you've been working on some other lessons. <laughs> Because it doesn't feel familiar. It's not familiar. But the sun suggests to me that, you know, once again, this is all in good fun. This is all in playful good fun. Even the seven of wands has a playful energy to it. And the sun here is just saying to me, there is playfulness here. There is hope here. There is a renewal here. There is a start here. Now it all centers on you doing that homework, releasing those old patterns, relaxing a little bit, and taking a leap of faith. Those are the three things that you're going to need to do this month in order to get into this beautiful, loving territory, to get into this new stage in your life and your progression. Now, it doesn't have to be just about love. This can also be about your career and where you're taking your energy next, because that Ten of Pentacles is about what you're doing in the world. So keep that in mind. And the moon cycle has a lot to do with your internal and your external spaces, how you take care of yourself at home, how you take care of yourself on the, on the external world. And you need both. So you're going to be asked to look at those as well. But I think this month is going to be magical and interesting and surprising. So take it all in. Be patient with yourself. Slow down a little bit. Look at everything before you jump to action. Be willing. Be open. I will see you in January for a lot more fun in Capricorn season. I'm hoping you all have a beautiful solstice and a beautiful Saturn transit <laughs> transition into a new sign. I love you all so much, and I will talk to you in January.